Hello and welcome back to the channel. So you know, if you see the YouTube channel, I'm mainly into astronomy, but I have other interests as well that I like to pursue here on this channel, and you may have seen some music videos that I've done here. But I'm also interested in writing, and in fact, I still view myself mainly as a writer. YouTube videos are just a different form of writing. So if you followed my career over the years, I'm mainly known as a science writer, but writing is writing. So with me is author Joni B. Cole, and I, you're a guest on my channel, but I feel like I'm entering your world right now. So you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, there's room for both of yeah. us <laughs> in the realm of creative writing. Well, I am an author and I teach creative writing and I have since God was a baby. In fact, that's how I met yeah. Ed because he was one of my mentees when he was in his graduate program. And um, yeah, so that's how we got to know each other and writing and teaching writing are what I'm all about. Okay, so you have three books coming out, right? I do. Yeah, I, should do. Be, I should be working on them right now. I was trying to relax. Well, I mean, so and you're, also, yes, I do. you're also on the board of directors for the Dartmouth Grad School. The Dartmouth Grad School, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. And what's the Irma Bombeck thing you have? We're, it's a humor writers conference, though it's actually humor and human interest now. It's a beautiful conference in Dayton, Ohio. Obviously, part of the legacy of Irma Bombeck brings in writers from all over the country and uh, just, just a really close-knit, great conference. You learn a lot. So I'm on the faculty for that, okay. coming up in October. Okay. What was the push cart thing you had? Well, I was nominated for a push cart. Um, for, you get nominated for a push cart. You're, if you were published in a literary journal, the editor can nominate any of the writers that have contributed to that okay. journal, and they can nominate you for a push cart. And so, yeah, I was nominated for a push cart, but probably everybody and their brother was too, so. <laughs> okay, well, nice, good. <laughs> no, it is, it was an honor, yeah. Okay, well, so in doing this, and people find out that I'm, that I'm in the creative writing world, um, I'd be surprised at how many people do this, but they don't tell anybody. You know, they they write short stories, or they write poems, mm -hmm. or they journal. You ever find that? Just people in everyday life just say this to you? That, yeah, well, oh my gosh. Yeah. You walk down the street and you trip over writers who say the last thing they'll admit or identify yeah. with is being a writer, and yet they either are writing or they have stories they want to tell or have some manuscript half finished in a drawer, and it's just such a healthy and I think a very human impulse to want to share your stories. So, yeah. I would say everybody is a writer, and you know, if you want to take it the full length, then just learn the craft of writing, and you can do it. Okay, so let me pose this question to you, because you're a teacher. Can creative writing be taught? Ah, yes, 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 yes. You're lucky I didn't hit you with that, yeah. yeah. I mean, look at all the teachers on the payroll of uh, graduate programs and undergraduate creative writing programs. So they're on the payroll for a reason. It can be taught. It's a craft. Clearly, there's an art and a magic and a mystery to creative writing. But it's also a set of narrative techniques that let you achieve the writing you want to achieve. And you can easily be taught them. And then it's a lifelong practice to really make those narrative techniques work for every single story, which they work differently in every story. But yes, 100%, you can teach creative writing. OK, so the reason I point this out is I think some people have this idea that this creative writing is this sort of magic sauce that these writers, these geniuses fall out of the sky <laughs> and then they produce something and then there's a genius, brilliant piece of work and that does happen. But most of the time it's a tedious process. I, I saw an interview once with Billie Eilish, the singer, mm. and she said, you don't want to see the songwriting process. Right. It's just too tedious to watch. Okay, so take us through this process. You are a creative writing teacher. So let's say somebody signs up for one of your creative writing classes. Somebody new who has never done this before. What can they expect? Well, you can expect deadlines because there's no point in talking about creative writing in theory. You need to just dive right in and share some pages. They can be just your first impulse, almost as if you're writing in a journal or stream of consciousness. You can also share pages of something you revised. But either way, you really need to submit right away to get feedback. Okay, so what you just said there is when they sign up for your class, mm -hmm. when they get to that first class, they have already submitted a piece of writing to yeah. the group? So yeah. short pieces, but yeah. Okay, so how many people do you typically have in a class? Five or six at the most, because okay. I think those deadlines, that in intimacy, that having to respond, having no place to hide is really important. I think a mix of genres and even experience levels actually feeds a class because it shows we're all beginners when we face a brand new draft. 
So how many pages typically would you ask from someone who is coming to your class sure. for a first time? How many pages well, typically? Typically, it's between two and four. Okay. And the two, you would think, what's that going to do for me? Let me tell you, for somebody to eke out two pages when they're nervous or they don't have any hours in the week, it adds up. And then the four usually, for some people, stretches to four and a half or five if they have sort of a whole unit, a chapter perhaps okay. or whatever. But that's a lot, of, a lot more substance than you think it is. Okay. And then, of course, it adds up because every week you have to keep submitting. Okay. So, so each person in your group reads everybody else's pieces. Yes. Okay, so that's actually quite a bit of work. Even if it's only two pages per five or six people, that's 10 to 15 pages worth of work that you have to read and come prepared to class right. to comment on, correct? Yeah, yeah, okay. it is. I mean, you know, you can subtract your own pages from that yeah. mix. But, and, and again, that's partly the nature of this type of workshop, my type, is that it has to be limited in pages. But part of the reason for that is also to limit the outside reading that you have yeah. to do. That said, when you are critiquing somebody else's work, and when I say critiquing, I mean you're also looking at, wow, why did I like that section? Or yeah. how come that worked? Or whatever. You probably learn more about how to revise your own work than when you get direct feedback on your own stuff. You can okay. just see stuff more. Like, oh, now here's what we meant when we said show, don't tell. Here's what we meant when we said you don't need all that description. And so the <laughs> workshopping of other people's stories is so beneficial to the writers, writers whose work isn't on the table at the moment. Okay, so when I've done feedback sessions, usually we'll pick one person, yeah. and then th th it's your turn you know, right. to sit. And we will begin by uh, saying what's working with the piece. Mm -hmm. You do something like that. And then once we've gone around the table, what's working on this piece will change to what can we do that's better. Well, we, we get to all that, but I don't make it so sandwichy. You know, we know about the feedback sandwich, positive, mm -hmm. then the, the, the kicker, yeah. you know, and then you end with something. So it, it's definitely great that we start with our enthusiasm. But it's a little more popcorny, you know. We go all over the place. We we look at whatever issues seem to call out the most. Okay. And and if I ever see as the facilitator, I don't always say the smartest things, but I do pay attention to the whole. And if I see we're either going down a negative rabbit hole or a positive rabbit hole, then I'll make sure that we back up. Look at look at what is really working with this. Or wait a minute, you know, is there anything that you know any areas for confusion? So you want a really a balanced conversation, but you want that writer to leave knowing as much what is working and okay. why okay. as where they can have an opportunity or two for improvement. But we're not quite so formulaic about it, it's like the okay. feedback sandwich. That, that can sometimes feel a little more insincere. And because everybody's story is on the table every week, there's nobody who feels particularly picked on okay. or overly, you know, okay. focused on. It also limits the amount of feedback for each story because there's a thing that's too much feedback. Okay. So. so the person whose work is getting workshopped at the mm -hmm. time, when I've done this, that person remains silent. Right. Is that with you as well? Oh, my gosh. Opposite. No. The really? reason The reason for that rule, and once... I, I believe in that rule, by yeah, the way. Okay. So you go get yeah. a healthy debate. Mm -hmm. But the reason for that rule, which, of course, is probably why you believe in it, is because potentially writers can be really defensive. And I'll say, oh, your beginning didn't, opening didn't work for me. And then you spend the next 20 minutes of your discussion right. defending that it did work. Or and what it's a waste of time. To, right. Yeah. But I have found that that, quote, slippery slope does not happen in my workshops. And if it does, a good facilitator can quickly nip it in the bud. So I think there's more detriments to the writer having to be stifled or silenced. Interesting. And I think that sometimes the writer's own questions can help. So I, the reason that I feel that rule is important is you need to let the conversation, you need to let the feedback go where it wants to go because right. you need to hear what people got from your piece. Right. If, the, if the discussion is going in a place that you didn't want it to go, you need to hear that. Yeah. Because what happens is if you start to interject, you'll say something, well, no, it's not about that. It's really about this. And you start explaining something that should have been in the piece to begin with. So right. the fact that it goes someplace you didn't want to go is, can be very helpful to you. And I was in a class once where a woman was, I said, you can't talk. And so we were talking about her work and it was going at, clearly we were going in a direction she did not want it to go. And her face was getting red and she was pounding the table with her fist. <laughs> no. And I said, no, 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 you can't say anything. You got to let this go where it wants to go. And she no. almost burst out. I mean, at the end she was like, no, you were all wrong. You're all wrong. You're all wrong. It's not right. And I looked at her and said, we're all wrong. Like if we're all wrong, 
maybe it's not us. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you this. Do you make your students read their works out loud? <laughs> Sounds like, like a Gestapo. Do, do you do it? Read your works out loud. <laughs> we absolutely read a tiny bit. There are time constraints. I mean, there, you cannot read the whole thing, but because I think you're often surprised by how lovely something is. And when I invite them to read from anywhere in the text, they will usually gravitate to the strongest section. So when they read those few paragraphs, it's striking to them, I think, as well as us, how, how much better, I think, the piece is than what they expected. It dignifies the work. Okay. Um, I always do it. I always make them read. It's nice. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. And number one is it's always instructive to hear a voice, a piece in the author's voice because they may say something in a way that, well, that's not how I heard it in my head. Right. And so, oh, that's a new nuance. It's a new dimension to this work that I hadn't thought of before. And the second reason I do it is I, I've taught um, in, at the college level for college students and getting them to get up and read is a skill that I like to teach them and they hate me for it. <laughs> I mean, they hate me. But years later, I'll sometimes get a letter saying, you know what, I hated you that day. But, <laughs> but the things that you taught me, I learned. And one of the things I teach them is if you go into any kind of a corporate office environment, there's always a demand for somebody to make a speech. And the, the old adage is, that's the number one fear of Americans, right? Is, right. It, and death is number two. Right, there's public an old, speaking's number yeah, one. There's an old Jerry Seinfeld joke that says, you'd rather be in the casket than delivering the eulogy. You know, it's so silly that you would be afraid of such a thing. <laughs> so I teach them that I have a podium in the front of the room, and they know when they walk in and that podium's in the room that day, you see these white ashen faces because everybody's in their oh, own little God. space waiting for their own personal version of hell to get up there and speak. <laughs> um, and so there are things like, well, I'm so nervous. I've had students get so nervous that the paper is flapping Aww. in the wind because their hands are shaking. And I said, okay, so look, if your hands are shaking and there's a podium, put your hands on the side of the podium, put the paper down and read. You can be, your hands can shake all they want, but your hands will be on the podium so they won't Good shake. Good to know. And I've had somebody write me back years later and said, you know what? I, I asked if there was going to be a podium because I knew it was going to be nervous and I grabbed the sides of it and nobody knew. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I can relate to those students. I get nervous. I do readings and I get nervous all the time. And it does help to have something stabilizing mm -hmm. and to concentrate all your attention in one little body part here or there. But yeah, I get nervous. There's not, I mean, people do get nervous reading in my groups, but they're only reading a short passage. It's just part of the initiation to get to the discussion, but it's great practice. It's, yeah. it's a great skill. So how many weeks typically does your feedback session, workshop, class, mm -hmm. whatever, run? How, how many weeks? Well, I run them six weeks at a time, but I have people that have been in the, the group literally for years. Okay. So, you know, they might skip one or two sessions, yeah. one or, um, so, you know, you only seek feedback when A, you're, you're being served, or when you're not being served by it, and, um, or you simply don't have time to read other people's work, but it's, it's an ongoing process, and it's just, it's just a support system right there for you whenever you need it. Yeah. So. And by the way, good luck getting into one of her classes because I think as soon as you announce one, they fee they fill up right away, right? Yeah, they because certainly you, you have been. To, yeah. You've had to cancel some because you're just too busy. Yeah. Yeah. So good luck with that. Yeah. So uh, and by the way, do you remember your very first words to me? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it was in a class at a feedback session. You had come to speak. Wait, are you to sure us. I should hear this? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You you had come to speak to us the night before, and the next morning. We were doing feedback around a table. There were about seven or eight of us, and you were doing feedback. And, uh, and I forget what the exact situation was, but I was making everybody around the table laugh. So I was being funny for some reason. I forget what it was I was saying. So everybody around the table was laughing, except, you know. And so you waited until the laughter died down. So the room is quiet. I don't know if I and like then, where this is going. And you looked at me deadpan. There was no expression at all in your face. You looked at me, and you said, Oh, how funny. <laughs> I do not remember that at all. But anyway, that was about eight years ago. And, but anyway, that's what happens in a creative I really said session. that? Yes, you did. Oh, oh how funny. Yeah. Was I being snotty? No, I think you genuinely thought I was being funny, but it's, it can be hard to make you laugh. You know? and <laughs> she does humor essays. This is what she does. It's hard to make you laugh. I don't think so. <laughs> oh, God. Well. Okay. 
Um, anything else you want to say about feedback sessions, what happens? We're trying to get you to uh, expect, know what to expect when you enter a creative writing class for the first time. Yeah. And one thing that I say is that there's one piece of advice for creative writers, especially those getting started out, is find a community, whether it's a class, an informal class. I would suggest you go to a formal class first just so you have an idea how oh, feedback absolutely. works. And even if you find out it's not for you, at least you'll understand the process for later. Yeah. It's the number one piece of advice. Find a class. Yeah. Well, there's a billion things that I could say about feedback, and which is why I've written a book about feedback. But basically, I think for writers, feedback is often the difference between writing and not writing. If you write in a vacuum, you're going to give it up sooner rather than later because you just feel lost in the weeds. And the other thing is feedback is often the difference between writing and writing well because you could have all the passion and scribbling ability in the world and if you don't hear whether your work is communicating and meaning something to another person besides yourself, you're not going to know or apply the craft that will really make you write the things you want to write. So feedback really makes that difference too. And it is so motivating. And, and um, it just makes the writing process more fun to be in a group, to be in, like you said, a community. And of course, it's very instructive. Yeah. So. Okay. Joni, where can we find you? Uh, I'm on the web at JoniBCole.com. I'll put a link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.